And what about um, going to startups or, you know, if those fast growth accelerated businesses that they can on one hand be very appealing. It comes with risk. Same philosophy. I mean, if, if, um, cause I, I approach, uh, I, I recruit for, uh, tier ones, mid tiers, but I, I love getting involved in the fast growth startups as well. And and sometimes um, I approach a, a kind of tier one, and it's like, ooh, that's that that feels like a big risk. And I get that completely. But what, what's your take on it? Well, I don't think I don't think there's any one tried and tested path to get to a sales director role. Um, you know, mine's probably been a bit more conservative, to be frank, than some others. Um, it's been a bit more within a single organisation, despite being in, in a number of different markets across the world. Um, it's, it's been uh, probably a safer route, uh, some may say. Uh, but at the same time, I think these different pathways uh, and the ones that are probably less tried and tested um, can be equally valuable as well. I mean, I think one of the things in larger FMCG firms that's pretty clear is the need to actually adopt and embrace some of the disciplines of uh, more disruptive startup businesses. I think one of the challenges at the moment is to do what the core of FMCG businesses do well today and do what startups do brilliantly and, and continue to disrupt and, and continue to innovate. Um, so I think from that sense of what's a, a requirement in, in, in more established FM, FMCG firms, I would argue that uh, experience in a startup environment and an experience in a more disruptive environment would be an asset to bring back to an organisation. I think the challenge is how you, as a, in a leadership role of, an, of, a, of one of these larger FMCG firms, is how you balance the two, how you balance the um, the almost exploiting what you do brilliantly today and then exploring these new worlds that are, uh, I think, a requirement for continued growth in whatever industry you're in. Um, often there is a degree of inertia in some of these, these big businesses that get a little bit uh, cautious perhaps of doing things that are a little bit uh, left of centre or out of the ordinary. But if you've got that experience and having had that experience in a startup, I think that might be a really great balance to bring into a big organisation to be able to help others navigate through that challenge uh, and being able to really uh, ultimately be ambidextrous and, and do what you do today brilliantly and what you need to do tomorrow equally brilliantly as well. Yeah, I think the, in my experience, again, recruiting across different types of organisations, my, my sense is very clear that the larger tier ones are much more open now to, yep. to bringing in people who've got those experiences. It used to be, um, you know, it's a very closed shop. You're either in that world or you're not. And, and, and um, But uh, there's a lot more kind of uh, appetite for bringing somebody who's got that disruptive thinking, particularly if you've got both. If they've kind of got this blend of, I get how tier one or larger structured company works, but I've spent time in this kind of disruptive environment, then that's a really powerful combination. Yeah, and I think, I mean, there are many big FMCG firms at the moment that have uh, almost internal incubator businesses as well. Mm. Um, you know, almost their own their own in-house versions of, of VC or private equity firms that identify new startup opportunities that look really attractive and are a great bolt on sort of inorganic acquisitions to their own business. So, you know, if it, that, that's a really interesting space to play in within FMCG as well, or, or even, even further beyond FMCG. But, you know, if we're talking uh, about our industries today, you know, startup experience and, and then bringing that uh, to a almost like an in-house VC or an in-house private equity firm, I think would be a great asset to bring because then you've almost got the license to behave like a, a startup, probably with the governance structures and framework of a big FMCG firm. Um, and you get a bit of the benefits of both. So I think that there's uh, an emerging appetite um, among some businesses and an established appetite already in some businesses that have these in-house incubator, in-house sort of, VC, PE type firms that would really benefit from, from startup experience coming into the organisation. Yeah, great.